scores from the Bell Telephone Hour. Now your host, Donald Gorey. Good evening. Our program tonight has a very special nostalgia and a very special warmth, too, because it recalls a man named Fred Allen. Everybody knew Fred as a Greek comedian, naturally, but only his friends realized how delightful a fellow he was off stage, too. I first met him in the early 1930s, when he was just getting started in radio. Matter of fact, we worked on a program idea that mixed comedy and music. I was friendly with Fred for a long time, and I considered it a positive triumph when, after many tries, I finally convinced him to come on the telephone hour with me in 1953 to narrate Prokofiev's Peter and the Wolf. I don't think that anyone who heard that original broadcast will ever forget it. And tonight, for the first time since then, we'll all be able to hear it again. First, though, the Bell Telephone Orchestra begins the show just as it did in 1953, with a tune that has a strong connection with Fred Allen. Please give me something to remember you by. Give Me Something to Remember You By, a fine Arthur Schwartz tune from Three's a Crowd. One of the stars of that 1930 review was Fred Allen, a vaudeville juggler turned comic who had made his Broadway debut two years earlier. Allen didn't sing, of course, and he didn't even act. He just came out in front of the curtain in Will Rogers style and wowed everybody with his hilarious monologue. We'll hear Fred's voice again, complete with that marvelously whiny drawl, in just a moment. Folks, you love. 
love live far away? You can visit them by phone, anytime. Long distance is the next best thing to being there. And now, here's the performance I'm sure you've been waiting for. Recorded from the live broadcast of December 14th, 1953. Fred Allen with the Bell Telephone Orchestra and one of the best-loved children's tales in all the world, Peter and the Wolf. Peter and the Wolf is a musical tale. Now, a tale isn't a tale, of course, until it has been told. And this tale is going to be told by a cast of musical instruments, a different instrument impersonating a different character. The bird will be played by a flute. The duck by an oboe. The cat, rather a low type, by rather a low clarinet. <laughs> the grandfather, a very old man, by a very old bassoon. Now, every tale, of course, has a villain. Our villain, the wolf, will be played by three horns. And our hero, Peter, a fearless little boy, is impersonated by a fearless string section. When our chorus of hunters start shooting their guns, to you they will sound like kettle drums. And now that you have been introduced to our entire company, our tale begins. Early one morning, Peter opened the gate and went out into the big green meadow. a friend of Peter's, sat up in a tree. Good morning, Peter, said the little bird as he started whistling a song. Peter listened to his friend, the little bird. A duck came waddling by, talking to herself. What a ducky day, said the duck. I think I'll take a dip in the pond. Seeing 
the dark, the little bird flew down and stood in the grass. He couldn't believe his eyes. What kind of a bird are you if you can't fly, said the bird. Well, what kind of a bird are you if you can't swim, said the duck, as he waddled away into the pond. and argued, the duck swimming in the pond, the little bird hopping along the shore. Suddenly, something caught Peter's eye. It was a cat crawling through the grass. was saying to herself, oh ho, the bird is busy arguing, eh? Well, now is my chance to catch breakfast. Stealthily, the cat crept toward the bird on her velvet paws. Look out, cried Peter, and the bird just in time flew up into the tree. quacked defiantly at the cat. From the middle of the pond. The cat mouthed things over at the foot of the tree. Now why should I climb up to the top of the tree on an empty stomach, said the cat. By the time I get there, the bird will be gone. Just then, Peter heard a voice. It was his grandfather. Peter said the voice, How many times have I told you to stay out of this meadow? Do you want to be eaten by a wolf? Peter. If any wolf starts eating me, it might be vice versa. Peter was sure brave. But the old man had heard brave little boys talk before. He chased Peter scat out of the meadow and locked the gate. Now the grandfather must have been psychic. For the minute they had gone, a big gray wolf did come out of the forest. saw the wolf 
And whoosh, she went up the tree like a flash. The duck saw the wolf jump out of the pond and waddled away as fast as her little fat legs would go. But the poor duck quacking along didn't have a chance. The wolf could run twice as fast as she could. He came nearer and nearer and nearer. Finally, with one big jump, the wolf pounced, and with one big swallow, he gulped down the little duck, quack and all. Now let us take inventory of our tale. Let us see how things stand. Well, the cat was sitting on one branch up in the tree. The bird perched on another branch, uh, not too close to the cat. And the hungry wolf paced round and round the tree, looking up at them with greedy eyes. While all this was going on, Peter, without the slightest fear, stood behind the closed gate, saying not a word, just watching. Suddenly, Peter got an idea. Running into the house, he got a strong rope. Hurrying back out, he climbed up on the high stone wall. One of the branches of the tree, around which the wolf was pacing, stretched out over the wall. Grabbing hold of the branch, Peter climbed up into the tree. Now here's what we'll do, Peter said to the bird. You fly down and heckle the wolf, but be very, very careful. And down flew the bird, flapping his wings at the wolf. They seemed to be playing a game, the bird coming nearer, the wolf snapping, the bird flying away. was furious. I'll catch this little pest and I'll eat him feathers and all, growled the wolf. But the bird chuckled through his beak and treaded air out of reach. <laughs> Meantime, Peter had made a loop in the rope and slowly, carefully letting it down,
He caught the wolf by the tail and pulled with all his might. Feeling himself caught, the wolf began to howl and jump, trying to get loose. Oh, am I mad, cried the wolf, as he howled and he jumped in that order. Foxy Peter had tied the other end of the rope tight to the tree. And all of the wolf's jumping only made the rope tighter around his tail. Just then, a party of hunters came riding out of the forest. They were following the wolf's trail and shooting as they came. shouted to the hunters from the tree. Don't shout, gentlemen. Don't shout. The bird and I have the wolf trapped. Just help us and we'll all take him to the zoo. They started in a single file to the zoo. What a triumphant procession. Peter, our hero, a born leader, leading the parade. hunters leading the wolf. procession came Peter's grandfather and the cat. The old man kept saying, this is some celebration, but what if Peter had not caught the wolf? What would have happened then? Nobody seemed to know. Mm -hmm. 
them all flew the little bird singing at the top of his voice look at what peter and i have done we have caught the wolf and if you weren't afraid to get close you could hear the duck quacking away inside the wolf because in his haste the wolf had swallowed the duck alive the end of the duck and this is the end of our tale. What a flood of memories that evokes. Fred Allen, one of America's greatest comedians, turned narrator for a night on the Bell Telephone Hour. The night was December 14th, 1953. The piece, of course, Prokofiev's ever popular Peter and the Wolf. I'll be back after this final message. To think, I could send my designs all over the world just by... Fashion designer Mary Quant, creator of the miniskirt. Oh, of course, we have telephones over in England, but I never dreamed you could do such wild things with them. You know, here in the States, you can actually send drawings, I mean pictures, right over the telephone system. To me, that's something else. Just think, I could send my designs all over the world just by picking up the telephone... It isn't so much our telephones, Miss Quant. It's our network that links them together that makes the difference. The most extraordinary communication system in the world. It can take your call and instantly switch it to any of 102 million other telephone devices. On our nationwide network, anything goes. People talk, computer talk, pictures and drawings, anything. Instantly, anytime, anywhere. Your anywhere, anything, anytime network. AT&T. If you enjoyed tonight's show with Fred Allen anywhere nearly as much as I did, we both had a marvelous time. Now, this is Donald Voorhees, hoping you'll be back with me next week at the same time when the vocal artistry of Lucina Mar takes the spotlight in more encores from the Bell Telephone Hour. Stay tuned for Monitor. This is the NBC Radio Network. Ooh.